the skids because they tell me how much, or they suggest to me how much people are absorbing. Roy, you're one of the quickest studies I've ever known because you get, yeah, you get the nuance, you get the inside track, <laughs> you know, of what we teach and what I talk about and it comes back. And sometimes I think hearing it through music or hearing it through a skit or some form of art might even be better than directly through a talk because people learn in funny ways. Uh, I remember being at Boston University many years ago and I was taking a colonial American history course for history majors. It was a high level course, and one that I had really no business being in because I was up with all these history majors and you know, my, most of my high school education was learning how to drink beer. And you know, so it was really quite a thing to be in that class. And I uh, was friends with a lady from East Village in New York who never had an education, but I think she was one of the most educated people I've ever known. And she was known to have read the time, they said every book that was in the North Adams Massachusetts Library. And she was brilliant. And she knew Salvador Dali and many people. And I just always loved being in her company. She's kind of like an anti main type of person. She just knew so much about so much. And I said, how did you, why did you? And she says, well, I just started reading historical novels. And that was my trick to getting all these high grades in these American history classes. And otherwise, you could, I would, if I read that out of a textbook, do you think I would have gotten an A in that course? It wouldn't have done it. I needed to have things put in context for me. And what you provide for us in the skits, as Carolyn would in song, as somebody else would in poem, or some, you know, anything that's free and loose and creative and artistic, everybody will get. It. That's why it's all important. I know I'm pretty good, but that isn't cut it because what we're here to do is to move people, to get inside people's heads so they can create a better life for themselves. And people being people will tune people out in a second. Oh, I already know what Greg's going to say. You know, or Carolyn might do that towards Leslie, or Leslie towards Carolyn, or Kevin, or Roy. We do that, and it's really too bad that we do it, but we do it. But the, the skits and the poems are fresh, and they engage you. And you can't have your prejudice, because they, they, they come at it from another direction. That's why the entire Bible, the thing that stands always, is the parables. It isn't the church, it isn't the doctrine, it isn't any of the crap that was written over the hundreds of years about that man, it's the stories. You were reading it this morning in the reading, and you again talking about it was Carolyn's reading when you're of Holmes. It's really the prodigal son story again. You're established in the kingdom. You can be nowhere else. You are it. It is you. The universe is wooing each of us always. And here's the other part of it. It's never about what we want. And that's the thing that's really the challenge about this teaching. We don't get what we want. And when people come to realize that it isn't about what we want, then all of a sudden, you know, you're not going to get a lot of people that are going to run to a center because we don't save you here. We don't tell you that you have to die for Christ or, you know, turn your life over. And none of that. We're not selling indulgences. We don't give free passes into heaven. None of that either. Be ye renewed by the transformation of your mind. Be ye renewed by the transformation of yourself. People looked at Jesus like he was the Savior. He clearly said no. 
When asked whether he was God, I am that. But he also said, you are that as well. These things and greater you will do too. He knew who he was. But like any legitimate spiritual master, any legitimate guru, he wasn't making himself the thing itself. He was there to ignite a principle, that God in you, the hope of your glory, that spirit, that divinity, that beauty in you, the hope of your glory. Though Christ has celebrated his birthday in Bethlehem for 2,000 years, unless that awakened spirit is in you, you're lost. You've been duped by whatever belief system you've been raised in. It will tell you to offer it up and be a good little girl, a good little boy, because your rewards are going to come later. Trust me. Your rewards are here and now, and they're there for you if you're willing to pick them up. Ernest Holmes said there is a bank account downtown with $50,000 in it with your name on it, and that was probably 50 years ago he said that. So let's say with inflation, the bank account's a half a million. All that number represented is there's good available to you that's unthinkable. But some of you have got such a poverty consciousness, so poor in spirit, poor in everything, that you don't have a consciousness of it. All you can think about is what you can't have, what you can't do, and what you need. Need is sickening. Never ending excessive demands. Need. Never ending excessive demands. The universe denies you nothing. Never has, never won't deny you. But it won't give you what you want either, though. There's the problem. I want what I want when I want it. You'll hear that said in every 12-step meeting throughout the country and the world. That's ego living on the basis of self-will run riot. A wise man, Chuck C., who I heard do a talk 25 years ago, who was famous, said, you need to surrender all your wants. He said, it wasn't until I got rid of all my wants, every last damn one, it wasn't until I did that with the universe and I got my bloated nothingness out of the way that Emerson talked about. See, your wanting is like the dog that's chasing its tail. You go round and round and round the merry-go-round of your wants and your needs, your never-ending excessive demands. You will drive yourself crazy, you will have despair, you will have sadness, and you will not get what you want anyway. So it's clearly an exercise in futility. What do you suppose this man Chuck C. wrote in his book, A New Pair of Glasses? And even the title of this book was wonderful because really what it, it suggests the answer in the title of the book. A new pair of glasses would suggest we need to start looking at the world in what? in an entirely new way. If you see that damn cup as being half full and over brimming, even when you're sitting in a room with no people or your life doesn't seem to be working, if you have that consciousness, the fullness of it, to see the good of God in that moment, you've got something. If you see it any other way, it's done unto you as you believe. Poor me and ain't it awful. Woe is me. Life is unfair, and we've all, we know them all. Whatever conversation lives within you is what lives out there in your world. You want to have the outer experience be different than the inner one must be. It's like cleaning a house, Louise Hay would say in this beautiful book that we all know that we teach and we so love. You begin wherever you are with whatever story it is that you are circulating within your own mind. Wherever you see yourself as disadvantaged, wherever you see yourself as wrong, wherever you see yourself in any way other than fantastic, 
That's where you do the work. Wherever you start to make it about the other person, some fact of your life, it's a mistake. You see why we don't have a bunch of people here? This teaching is really about taking responsibility for whose life. And it's a fantastic teaching, don't get me wrong. It's liberating. It's the most liberating teaching on planet Earth. But it also asks the most. This isn't for kids. I mean, by that I mean it isn't for spiritual uh, babies. It isn't for people who want to be saved or rescued. It is for transformation. It is for success. It is for health, it's for wealth, it's for every good thing you can imagine. But in the process of claiming those things for yourself, putting those demands on consciousness, because those are your birthright, all of them and more, what's required of you is letting go of the stories, one and all. The needs. I need. You're provided with everything. And when something is clearly not going your way, great. Because that means this isn't meant to be happening right now. You don't need to have a story about it. You just need to know this isn't meant to be happening right now. I learned in these teachings years ago, this or something better. When you're not getting what you want in any given moment, great. Know that that's a good thing. This isn't meant to be happening right now. All of us live our lives like a horse with blinders on. You know what a horse with blinders is, right? You ever gone to a race? The horse has got. You can see a sliver of what's in front of you. Your, your peripheral vision is lacking totally because you're a horse with blinders on. You can only see what you can see. There's a whole world of opportunity and loveliness out there, as of course and miracles would suggest, but you'll never see it because you're focused on seeing what you want to see and you're conditioned your thinking. You think you know everything about everybody you've ever known. You are not able to see life as life really is. You see it through perception of some really dirty glasses. It's tough even seeing the people you love because you already have decided who and what they are. And this is really important to get this right, because listen, if you're lucky here in this group, I'm looking, we have, what, 10, 15, 20 more years? None of us know. We might even only have next week. How would you want it to, if you could write your own script, because you are writing your own script? Why don't you write it that you're amazing and see what that might look like? that I'm supportive, I'm involved with a group of people here, and we're trying to do something important. We've lived our lives, the first half of it, me, 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 getting what we want for, you know, we've done all that, most of us, with very mixed results. Our teaching is about learning to love ourselves. Anybody that's involved in a recovery process too, they understand that too. It's ultimately about love. It's about loving yourself and letting go of the stories that do not serve us or support us. Trading in the lesser ideas for the greater and embracing the truth. The truth is that you're supplied, supported, loved, important in the universe, deserving of good things always. You don't believe it, though. So you'll take what the birds got for breakfast, which is damn little. You'll stay in crazy relationships that are really anything but love. Jobs that, I need this paycheck. Well, perhaps you do this week. But your need is so great that you can't see the greatness around you. You can't see the opportunities that are there. You can't see the platforms from which you can stand, the places you can go.
this room could be overflowing today because it's that good of a teaching. Our act needs to coalesce and come together here. We have something really important to say, and I don't know where it's being said elsewhere. How great thou art. The world is for you. It's all happening for you. And yet we'll go back into our day-to-day -day living and we'll get too busy and we'll forget. And we'll get hammered by life. Because that's what we do. Some of us. We, won't, we have amazing power, Ernest Holmes said. There's power for good in the universe greater than you, and you can use it. Sometimes using that power simply by saying no. That's amazing power right there. More often you use your power by saying yes to life. But you have power. And you can use it. Sadly, most people don't. They acquiesce. They don't think. They're not present in a new moment. They have very few new moments. You could change all of that in the twinkling of an eye. But you know, it's, it's more than that, though. There needs to be such a huge commitment to love yourself. What Louise Hay's book is really all about. A huge commitment to love who? Yeah. There's nobody nicer to be nicer to. I mean, really, really, really. You know, the thing is, wherever it isn't working, it's always going to come down to that. She will say the bottom line for everybody I've ever worked with, and I've heard all the stories. I feel the same way now myself. So I don't love myself enough. I'll take this, I'll accept this, because I can't get up what I want, what I need. Uh, it's really a lack of trust in the universe. It's a lack of faith. You don't believe life is there for you, so you'll accept very little. You've forgotten how great thou art. You've forgotten that you're the heir to all good. You've forgotten that you're one with the Father. The Father and I are one. You've forgotten that you're, you love your brother as yourself because he or she, in fact, is you. You think you're alone and separating the world, which is a joke. That's what you think. Not true. This is why the classes are important. They're critical. They're so important. They change everything. The people go to the classes ultimately really get the teaching and they have a chance. You don't get that on a Sunday morning. Sunday morning is a place where you get messages through Roy and poems and songs. And, you know, you come together and there's a community and all of that is really helpful. In AA they will say, if you want what we have and you're willing to go to any lengths to get it, then you're ready to follow certain steps. Well, you know, part of it's getting really honest with the most important person in your world. And the realization that nobody's doing anything to you. Never, never, never. Maybe when you're younger you can say it happened. Okay, fine. There's no excuses anymore. You have the ability to create a fantastic life. You've defined yourself as too old, too sick, I have this issue, my condition has this condition, and you know, we're going to talk about our conditions and our limitations. We're going to argue for our limitations. Where do you think any of that's going to take us? You know, here's the thing. I had a great teacher years ago who said religious scientists, people who are practitioners of this teaching, applaud every effort. Maybe you do have some of these challenges. <coughs> Present. Nobody can fault you for being where you are right now, least of all me and hopefully never you. What's interesting and important is what are you going to do with them right now? I know patients who run tons of medication in one of my jobs. Way, way, way too much. 
I'm not in a position to tell them, don't take it. I am in a position to say, you know, really have deep conversations with your doctors and explain what your goals are. Wherever you see yourself financially talking about your story, understand that much of what you're talking about is a what? A story. Understand that the universe's will for you is to be happy, joyous, and free. Now, that idea of being happy, joyous, and free isn't suggesting you be broke and miserable, is it? Or homeless, or hurting. From the Course in Miracles, there's a line. Miracles are natural. When they're not being experienced, something has gone wrong. It doesn't mean anything has gone wrong with life. It's suggestive that there's a problem with who's thinking. Doesn't mean anybody here or anywhere that's listening to this message is a bad person. I will never, never, never say that. Everybody here is fantastic, divine, children of God, one with God, one with the Father, Mother God. Yes, but there's something wrong with what? Perceptually, we got a story that needs to be routed out. You're arguing for your limitations if you're in those states of consciousness or those circumstances. That he did. What a pity. It doesn't need to be that way. You think it needs to be that way because you're entrenched in your story. I don't have pity for people who are in those circumstances. I have just like, I'm thinking, shit, when the hell are they going to what? Wake up. And put a demand on consciousness because surely the universe will give you more if you really get clear that you what? Deserve it. If you don't think you deserve it, you don't think you're worthy, the universe says to you, yes, you're right, you don't. And you stay stuck. And when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and stuck long enough, you might have a new moment, a new idea. Some of us are slow learners. You've heard the story about the man on the sidewalk. He goes down the street, round the corner, falls on the sidewalk. Next day, he goes down the street, round the corner, falls on the sidewalk. Keeps falling on the sidewalk. This could go on for years. And when he's sick and sick and totally sick of himself and falling in that damn hole, he decides to do what? Take a different route, for God's sake. Ernest Holmes said there's power for good in the universe greater than you and you can use it. Well, my God, you are using it anyway. So you might say, well, you know what? It's easy for Greg to say this here. He's been teaching this stuff for 34 years and or whatever it's been. And it is easy for me to talk about it, but it isn't necessarily always easy to practice it. Because you're going to find yourself not in those moments of connection. And you're going to find yourself in stories. And you're going to say, oh my God, here I am again. I've just created this person to be a monster. And I've done this, I've done that. And that's really great. Because you're acknowledging that you have what? You've done it. It's great. You're not blaming the administration in Washington. You're not blaming the economy. You're not blaming, blaming the Republicans or the Democrats. You're your boyfriend, your job, you're taking responsibility for your own darn what? Experience in life. Life responds to you. The second half of our lives, most of us, will be about giving ourselves away to the universe and to be of service. <coughs> For most people, the first half is about me, 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 and me. When you begin to understand what this teaching is all about, you're going to understand that you are, in fact, everybody. You can't take from others without hurting yourself. 
As you give of your time, your talent, your treasure to others, you amplify your own good. You will get that eventually if you stay in the teaching. You know, you're here to be an agent for healing and to have happiness, joy, to be happy, joyous, and free. When you elect to do it another way, being cut off from the world and thinking, woe is me and ain't it awful, and you know, you're going to get yours and do me, me, as my friend Cliff used to say, that's just being ignorant. There is no me in that sense. There's one. And you don't get and have experienced goodness at the expense of others. So we come here to grow, we come here to learn, evolve, to know that we're supplied and supported, and to think new thoughts. Sometimes it's hour by hour, or moment by moment. But as you work this teaching, this teaching begins to work in you, and everything begins to change. And eventually you'll conclude that it's all happening not to you, but for you. So that's the good news for today. Thank you.